Well, John Popola, thank you so much for sitting down with us here at the Aussie Wire booth. We're in the atrium, surrounded by people having lunch, so thank you for taking time away from lunch. Uh, I, I, I won't be long, I promise. I'll, I'll let you go and eat. Now, we're here at the launch of the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship. Yep. What even is this? No one's heard of it before. Well, I saw it when um, Jordan Peterson announced it, who I'm okay. a big fan of. And um, the way I see it, it's an attempt to bring people together that have fundamentally a set of shared values, right? Okay. And those shared values are, first and foremost, a belief in the power of individual agency. Okay. And a growth mindset, and a sense that we have not just freedom, but responsibility. And that right now, in the face of I believe a kind of existential attack on the basis of civilization itself. That's, we have, that's no small thing, that's a big statement. I 100% stand behind that. Okay. That we are called to stand up and show courage, and courage is not just criticizing, but taking responsibility to create something new and to tell that story so that people understand why it's one thing to run from something. It's another thing to run to something. And I think that's the power of great storytelling, that hero's journey. And that journey has a destination. And that is what I think we're here to do. OK, I couldn't agree more. But that leads me right into my next question, which is, the theme is a better story. What is that story? I. That's a great question. And I am not a representative of the, of the, no, no. Of the in organization. In your understanding. The way I think of that story fundamentally is, um, that we, we have a nature, that that nature is not um, blank. We are not blank slates. Sure. And that utopia cannot be achieved in this world. Okay. And yet, there is beauty, there is incredible things to be excited about in, in this flawed and fallen world that we live in. Sure. And if you can embrace what that is, then you can escape this vortex of despair that is being pitched ironically by people who claim to be agents of utopia, to bring about perfect equity in a world of diversity and inclusion and all the buzzwords we all hear that get sort of regurgitated zombie-like in a kind of mad libs everywhere yeah. we turn, especially in front of our kids. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that story is that we are creatures who are creators, who have incredible potential, that that potential is unlocked in love and community, and that it is unlocked in freedom so that we can explore what that potential is, because you don't know what my potential is, Yeah. because I don't even know what my potential <laughs> is. I have to go yeah, out there and fair. figure it out. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I think that that is what this is about. That's certainly what it's about for me, and that's why like I embrace personally, my role as a father and as a man, and I take that very seriously. And those two roles have been under assault, especially I'm an American, we lead the world in fatherlessness. It is almost as big of a disgrace as the critical theory, toxic waste that our country has been exporting to the rest of the world and yeah, been adopted by the could you, could you stop doing that please? That'd be great. Yeah, just, no, no. just keep all that country. stuff for yourself, I all right? I love our country, <laughs> and I'm so ashamed of what's become our most potent recent export. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is something that we have to stand up against, because think about it like this. I, there was an experiment in the, in the wake of, uh, of um, the civil rights movement in the United States okay. called the Blue Eyes, Brown Eyes Experiment by okay. a teacher, and in, in, I think in, in Michigan. And if she basically took her students in an attempt to try to teach them about oppression and and what was going on in the 60s at the time, mm -hmm. and separated them on the basis of an arbitrary difference. Sure. Their blue eyes or brown eyes. And then alternated days, who, who's better and who's worse? And that is the most replicatable social experiment in how to quickly create division, tribalism, and destruction we have ever seen. Most of social science is, is not replicatable. It's basically garbage. Yeah. This one replicates. Yeah. And, and we've turned it into our primary motivation for all of social activity. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. All right, so, so you've, you've given me an idea of the better story. You've given me, give, given me an idea of the worst story that we're now trying to overcome. My question is, why did we let go of a good story? Why did we accept a bad story in the first place? Why are we even having this conference and this conversation? Why is this necessary? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons. I think some of it is, a, is fundamentally a wealth effect. We've gotten fat and lazy as a society. 
and um, and I'm I'm a big believer in prosperity and global capitalism and free trade and frankly of immigration. I think all of these things are good. Yeah. Humans are good. We are creators. Yeah. But we've gotten lazy. Number one. Mm -hmm. I think that laziness manifested in the aftermath of the fall of the Soviet Union. Okay. You know, Francis Fukuyama said, we're at the end of history. Uh, end of history, yes. Oh, well, if you're at the end of history, you can kind of kick back, uh, dear. smoke a cigar. Hey, don't knock cigars. <laughs> don't knock cigars. <laughs> we're fine. And then um, we didn't take seriously something that I think needs to, we need to be radicals about, which is that government should have no role whatsoever in the education of our children because politics is a place that must be constrained. And I am speaking very much as an American here, but we sure. need to tie that beast down with You're chains. speaking to a libertarian, so <laughs> I mean, you'll get no argument out of me. Well, and so this is the problem. We turned our back because we grew up in schools that weren't whacked out and crazy and thought, yeah. oh, well, it's yeah. fine. And I moved to a good neighborhood or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And our institutions became captured by psychopaths, by you know, cluster B personality lunatics, mm -hmm. and, and well-meaning people who are just confused about what it means to create a better world. Sure. So I don't want to be too judgmental. I think we need to be open-hearted. They're not all psychopaths. But too many of them are. And, <laughs> They're in there. And, and even worse, <laughs> the minority of psychopaths are given um, full reign by the good-hearted people who are frankly afraid of them in their midst. And so if we, I think if nothing else, this is about showing courage and standing on our two feet and saying, no, you're, you're, you belong back in the fringe from which you came. You should be allowed to speak your lunacy. Mm -hmm. And then it can be revealed in, in, in the battle of ideas. Yeah. But, but we're not going to let you own the stage anymore. Yeah. Wow. So do you think that this can actually achieve any of that? I mean, this, isn't this just some out of touch elite talk fest? In London, of all places, you know, one of the hives of, of degeneracy. Um, you know, how could this possibly have any relevance in the real world? Well, on one hand, it is right. It's a bunch of elite talkers, people like me. I mean, I'm not lying, right? That's, that's all true. That's all true. But community matters. Connections matter. Us, as people who play different influence or influential roles in our lives, in our, with our families, and maybe on a broader stage with people like Douglas Murray and Jordan Peterson sure. and the like. Yeah. We do have to come together. We do have to compare notes. We have to find, find unified stories that we can all tell together. Yeah. And I think that plays a really important role. And, um, you know, every, the, the American Revolution was not a majoritarian event. It was a small group of people, mm -hmm. weirdly animated yeah. by Enlightenment ideals, yeah. and, and overwhelmingly by things like abolitionism, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is why in the United States, in the immediate aftermath of our Declaration of Independence, uh, we had the actual first states to abolish slavery yeah, in wow. the North. Wow. So people think, oh, well, America didn't, was kind of a disaster on slavery, and we were, but we also had the first states yeah. in this planet to yeah. abolish it. And yeah. that came from small groups of people unified in shared values and vision for a better world. And I think that's what this is. It's funny that you mentioned America, the American Revolution. Uh, I have a line of t-shirts and one of them says, uh, too much 1984, not enough 1776. Hell yeah. We could, we could do with a bit more of that <laughs> spirit, I think. So how do we measure success? How will we, I mean, obviously a three-day conference doesn't change the world, but going forward out of this, what should we be looking for to actually go, well, could this be a vehicle that might actually turn things around to some degree or other? What are we even looking for? Well, I have a simple one okay. that I will put out there and hopefully people here will hear about. Yeah. Everyone here needs to do a couple of things. And if, we, and if everyone here does them, that would be success almost in and of itself. Okay. If you are an employer, tell the world that the Ivy League is now a badge of disgrace and you will be put at the bottom of the list for consideration in hiring. Mm -hmm. It is an admission that you may be a grenade with the pin already pulled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have to delegitimize places that have delegitimized themselves. Yeah. And there is a lot of influential people who here, many of whom have employees and run organizations. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, don't send your kids to these places. We, a lot of these people here are parents. Homeschooling dad right here. So 
I would sooner put my son in a coal mine <laughs> than a government school or an elite private school yeah. that teaches victimhood ideology. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if, if, if nothing else, those are, because I think the things that when you talk about measuring success, I look at action. Mm -hmm. And those are actions everyone here can take in their mm -hmm. own lives and that model what we want others to do. And I think that's the place to start. Sure. Brilliant. Look, this has been such a fun conversation. I'm going to let you go and get your lunch. I promised I would. But John, Sounds thank great. you so much. And let me tell you, uh, your Melbourne documentary hit home at a really important time. It was an act of courage. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. I appreciate it.